The UCF campus is actually it's a very vibrant campus. It is it has now become the second largest university in the country. It has over 59,000 students and it's growing. The Department of Physics, uh, you know, just like the university, uh, it's a relatively young department. We are a research department. We are very very focused on research, but we don't want to ignore teaching either. So we pay attention to both. And our mission is is essentially to produce the best uh, graduate and undergraduate students. We have recently also gotten quite a bit uh, in, in made inroads into physics education research. I'm very proud of the studio that we have, which is uh, a, a, an inquiry-based way of teaching physics. And this is something where we uh, have about 100 students in this room, where we, do ink, uh, we, we teach in a pedagogy that seems to be working better than the lecture mode that we were using before. We have a very strong, for example, condensed matter physics uh, group in which we have a large number of people doing what is called computational design of materials. We also have people looking at mm, catalysis. Uh, you know, this is a physics department, but we have a very strong nano catalysis program here. And then we have a very strong program in, in uh, atomic physics, particularly in attosecond physics. The program in planetary science is among leading in the world. I'm involved in several research projects at the moment. One of them is the Cassini spacecraft. That's an international mission led by NASA and the European Space Agency that's orbiting Saturn. I involve students in every aspect of my research. One of the real world applications for our research is that we're taking advantage of the new emerging commercial suborbital launch industry. These are rockets that are being developed for primarily tourist uses to go into space, but they've got a great scientific and educational potential as well. My research area is auto second science. One of the things we are working on is to produce the shortest laser pulses. I have about six graduate students. Um, at, at different levels, they conduct different type of research. It's very important. The real world application is first for studying and developing high speed devices like high speed uh, chips for computers, uh, fast memory devices, for example. My research really builds foundation for nanoscale technology. Specifically, uh, graphene sheets and nanotubes are deemed to be useful for sensor applications. Um, and also detector, optic optoelectronic detectors applications, and also high-speed electronics. There's a future for these materials. And the applications that we can derive for, from these is something that is completely transformative and groundbreaking. That if applications are not, not something that you've ever thought about. My group deals with the novel properties of nanostructures and uh, we are investigating with a focus on uh, the area of catalysis. This has applications, for example, in the area of uh, environmental remediation or energy production. At the moment, we are trying to develop a new catalyst uh, to take, uh, for example, to uh, convert uh, carbon dioxide into uh, liquid fuel, for example, methanol. So we are looking at uh, developing new catalysts for automotive industry and also looking at uh, how to develop new materials for, to solve the energy challenge that we have in the 21st century. In my research area, I have a fairly large research group now, about 11 graduate students, and the area is in uh, infrared uh, science and technology. I'm currently working on a uh, kind of uh, infrared detector, which is based on a microelectrical mechanical system, or MEMS. Uh, it's a cantilever that bends down under the influence of uh, infrared radiation. That's a very small thing and it's supposed to have a very fast response time, ultimately giving us high-speed infrared video. My research is about biophysics, uh, mostly protein structure aggregation um, related to diseases. One example would be uh, the capsule protein of HIV virus. And if we can find a way to stop the assembly, the formation of this capsid, or find a way to stop its uh, disintegration during infection, we hopefully can find a way to cure this disease. 
I'm in my third year now here at UCF, so I spend most of my time doing research and I do a little teaching. I do uh, low temperature condensed matter research. One project that I'm working on now is a spin echo experiment. The samples we're looking at are single molecule magnets and they have um, the possibility to be used in spintronics, they can be used as uh, potentially data storage. My research area is uh, computational condensed matter physics. Uh, it's uh, designing uh, nanomaterials. One of the projects that I'm uh, working on uh, is uh, designing uh, molybdenum disulfide transistors. Because I'm very proud of having a department where the climate is really conducive to, to both research and, and training uh, of uh, students, undergraduate and graduate students, are, can go to at least one conference in a year, uh, paid for by the university. And there are lots of uh, research uh, competitions that are held locally. You know, there's no limit here to how far you can go.